Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. This is the midweek edition. Today is July 21st, 2021. Since Monday, we have this short squeeze going. Is this short squeeze going to continue? We're going to talk about that in this video, along with the uh, internals and the sentiment and see how that has changed since Monday's sell-off. Stay tuned. Let's start with this intraday chart here, this three minute intraday chart of the S&P 500 and also the internals and the sentiment. And uh, looking back on Monday, you see Monday gap down and it stayed near the low throughout the afternoon until the last 15 minutes or so before the uh, closing bell. And that's where we typically see the shenanigan of the OPEX because Monday is OPEX. Now notice also the uh, uh, the new high, new low. Throughout the day, there were more new low, 52 week low than 52 week high, and it was uh, somewhere around uh, uh, 80 plus uh, more new uh, 52 week low than 52 week high. And notice also the up down volume ratio was more than 18 times in favor of down volume right after the open, and also the VIX came up to 25 so it was right you know inside in between the 20 and 30 zone that we have that indicate that the market participant are getting fearful and also the put call ratio was above 0.75 was sitting somewhere around 0.8 and also the uh, advanced decline 2800 2800 more decliner than advancing issues Okay, there's only a little bit over 3,000 uh, stock traders in the New York Stock Exchange. So when you see 2,800, that's practically almost all the stock in the trader in the New York Stock Exchange is pretty much down. That was how bad it was on, on Monday. Now, after that uh, little shenanigan at the uh, last 15 minutes on Monday, then on Tuesday, we got this short squeeze come in going to show you later why do I suspect that it was a short squeeze on Tuesday. You know, the price gap up and it just continued to move up throughout the day. And also notice that the up-down volume ratio was also moving up you know, and got to the peak of somewhere around 10 to 1 in favor of the uh, up volume. And in addition to that, we also see there were more you new know, 52-week high than 52-week low. So it's a reversal of Monday. Then the other things to keep an eye on was the, uh, the VIX. We saw the VIX went from a high of 25 and dipped back below the 20 level. In addition to that, the put call ratio also came back down and dipped below the 0.75. And it was sitting somewhere around the 0.55 area. So all of a sudden, the market participant, you know, got greedy again and also got complacent uh, again. It's like Monday never happened. Now also in they're looking at the advanced decline. The advanced decline was also another reversal of Monday. We saw over 2,300 issue advancing in price versus declining in price. Remember on Monday, we saw 2,800 issue declining in price versus advancing in price, right? Now, then on today, notice today, we have this melt up continue. Got a little short squeeze. Today is Wednesday OPEX. So again, we expect to see a little bit of a shenanigan at the end of the day, and it didn't fail us. So we saw a little bit of a ramp up in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. But again, we saw the uh, price went up and today the price went up uh, 35 point of 0.82% with the uh, uh, the advanced decline. Also, uh, with the new high, new low, there were 95 more uh, new 52 week high than 52 week low. And the uh, up down volume ratio was about five to one in favor of the uh, up volume. Uh, throughout the day, the high was somewhere around 11.8, you know, so it's almost 12 to one. 
in favor of the up volume. And again, the VIX continued to come down, and today it closed down below 18. It's sitting at 17.9. So we went from on Monday at 25 to 17.9. And the put call ratio continued to sit at that 0.55 level. Matter of fact, on the open, it actually went down to 0.428. And for the advanced decline, we have 1,590 more advancing issue than declining issue. Now let's take a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500 and also the market internal. But before we do that, just uh, kind of recap on the sentiment. Once again, on, on Monday, we saw this uh, down there on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we got the short squeeze. Then on uh, today, we have this uh, continuation of a melt up. And the uh, fix uh, closed at 17.91. And the put call ratio at 0.54 or close to 0.55. And here the uh, up-down volume ratio is uh, five times more up volume than down volume versus uh, yesterday on a short squeeze, it finished up at uh, 8.7 times more up volume than down volume versus on Monday, it was uh, 7.3 times more uh, down volume than uh, up volume. And similarly for the advanced decline, on Monday it was... Uh, uh, 2,513 more declining issue than advancing issue. And yesterday, 2,274 more advancing issue than declining issue. And today is 1,651 in favor of the advancing issues. And the new 52-week uh, high versus 52-week low. As you can see, on Monday, we saw more 52-week low than 52-week high. And that's been quite a while. The last time that we saw that was back here on May 13. And on Monday, there were uh, uh, 87 more new 52-week low than 52-week high. But on Tuesday, there were more 52-week uh, high than 52-week uh, low. And also, uh, similarly uh, for today, there were 95 more new 52-week high than 52-week low. So it got back to the positive territory Although it's not that impressive, it's still under 100. Looking at the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, we see that it is still below its peak and it is still running a negative divergence uh, with the uh, S&P 500. Although they uh, both came up right now, but once again, we are still looking at a uh, negative uh, divergence, a lower high on the uh, advanced decline line versus the... Uh, higher high on the S&P 500. Now looking at the NASDAQ 100, you can see the NASDAQ 100 also show a similar type of price action as the S&P 500. We also got a short squeeze on Tuesday, yesterday, and today continue to melt up. Today, the uh, NASDAQ 100 closed up a little bit over 114 point or 0.78%. And it closed the day with a uh, four a little bit over 4 to 1 uh, in favor of up volume. And also uh, 2,316 more advancing issue than uh, declining issue. Yesterday, there were uh, 2,470 more advancing issue than declining issue. On Monday, it was a little bit better than the New York Stock Exchange. There were 1,931 more declining issue than advancing issue versus the New York Stock Exchange. There were... Uh, 2,800 uh, more declining issues than uh, advancing issues. And today, uh, the NASDAQ actually got 53 new 52-week high than 52-week low. Uh, you look at uh, Monday, it was uh, 215 more new 52-week low than 52-week high. And here, the cumulative advanced decline line in the NASDAQ market continue to show weakness and that negative divergence and you can see that the NASDAQ 100 is only uh, a little bit off from this uh, all-time high. But you can see that the advanced decline line is way below its peak. Now let's take a look at the S&P 500 price action. As you can see on Monday, it came down and uh, 
test the 4,232 level, got a nice bounce and got back above this 42.55. And on Tuesday, we got this short squeeze that brought it back up and uh, tested the uh, 141 extension near the uh, 4,338. And today, it reclaimed that level. So um, might be uh, trying to uh, get back to this uh, 161 extension, this uh, 4,378. So I wouldn't be surprised that we could see that. And I'm going to show you why looking at that possibility of coming back up to this 161 or close to this uh, 4378 level. Now, as long as it doesn't put in a, uh, you know, a higher high, and if it keep below this high here, you know, let's say it come up and reverse back down and take down this low here, 42.32, then we essentially have established a reversal in trend, right? Because now we've been doing a series of, you know, higher high, higher low, okay? Then all of a sudden we get this lower high and then lower low. Those are the things that we need to keep an eye on for the uh, coming days and the coming week. But first thing first is to see how high will this go before it reverses back down. If it put in a new high, then this uh, reversal of or, the, or what I call a transition is no longer valid. So we just have to keep an eye on that. Similarly for the uh, NASDAQ 100, we see the NASDAQ 100 also uh, came back up to uh, recapture this 127 extension, this 14,584. And right now it is, uh, you know, knocking on the door of this 141 extension of 14,850. So again, we essentially are looking to see would it uh, come up and put in a low, lower high and then take down this low, then we will establish a lower high, lower low. So for now, we basically just have to keep an eye on to see would it uh, come up and put in a new uh, all-time high or would it reverse back down and uh, take out this low. And for the Russell 2000, it seemed impressive of the rebound, but again, we have to uh, uh, realize that it came all the way down to around 2100 before it started to bounce, and we were still waiting and watching, been watching before this uh, decline came along to see would it be able to recapture this 2297 level, because we're saying that it has to get back above this uh, level in order to come up, take out this pivot, then maybe we'll come up and test the all-time closing high. So right now, although it did come up a bit, but it is still on this decline, declining slope here. So it is uh, making a series of lower high and lower low. We'll see would it be able to come back up and take out this high, then it will break this lower high, lower low price action. Uh, until then, we're keeping an eye on the Russell to come down and possibly test this 2,075 level. And the Dow Jones Transportation is also trying to come back up to this 15,000 level here. And we're saying that it has to come up and take out this uh, resistance and, you know, and, you know, now this, uh, this trend line here and then this resistance then you have to take out this pivot high and then maybe it will be able to come up and put in another new all-time closing high. So there are a lot of obstacles for the tra transportation to overcome before it could get back to the uh, all-time high level. But right now, you know, it is forming a uh, lower high, lower low. And so until this high here will uh, take out this high, we are basically still looking at this lower high, lower low. Now, remember on Friday, the Dow Jones Industrial, just a little bit over a point and a half or so away from uh, tagging this all-time high. All right, then came along on Monday, then it uh, went down almost, you know, over 900 points at the low of the day, okay, on Monday. So, and then it came back up. Right now, fill this gap, and it seems like it is inching its way back up, and possibly put in a uh, or try to uh, tag this 
all-time high. And here on the uh, New York Stock Exchange composite, it also uh, came back up, but it is still uh, way below this pivot high here. So again, we are essentially still looking at a uh, lower, low, lower high. So unless it uh, take out this high, we'll continue to monitor how much higher this uh, will go before it uh, reverses back down to uh, form to continue to form this uh, lower high. Then we'll be uh, looking at the slow to get taken out. Now, before we go take a look at the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500, I post this, uh, this chart on my uh, Twitter uh, stream yesterday afternoon. And essentially saying that we're looking for the price, if it could uh, come up and move above this uh, 432, 433 area, then we likely see the price come in to chop around in this zone and possibly move toward the... Uh, 435 and a half level but if it uh, unable to uh, get above this uh, 432 then we expect it to uh, move down to this uh, this zone here and get back at this low here and chop around in this area below the uh, 425 area and the uh, 421 so here we are looking at the spy as you can see today's price action it is uh, coming in and starting to chop inside of this 432, 435 area here. All right, so we're going to see would it be able to come up and then get rejected, possibly come back in to this area here in the next uh, day or two. But eventually, we're basically looking for the price to move back down into this area and back down to this 434, 430. I mean 424, 421 area, if it is continued to form that lower high, lower low, okay, that big pattern that we talk about on the S&P 500. And here on the QQQ, the uh, ETF for the NASDAQ 100, you can see that it is coming up. So this is the key level to keep an eye on somewhere around this uh, 362.41. So basically watching this pivot high here, Okay. Because again, we are essentially looking for that possibility of a lower high, lower low. Okay. So as long as it doesn't get above here to make a uh, new all-time high above the 365.49 and then reverse back down, then we essentially have form the lower high and then looking for it to take down this low. You come down to the 351 area, then it will form this lower low. And here's the IWM, the ETF for the Russell 2000. Remember last time we talked about a lot of these zones here. So there are a lot of obstacles for the Russell 2000 to overcome before it could get back up to the uh, all-time high that was made back in March time frame. Right? So right now it did uh, get a nice bounce, but again, you know, it's still pretty much uh, way below its high here. So right now we're going to see would it be able to come into this area and come up toward the uh, 227. If it's unable to get up the, to that 227, we're expecting it to come back down and take out the 214 and retest this low and go below these uh, this uh, Monday's low here. So it's been forming this you know lower high, lower low. So we're gonna see what it will come up and take out this high. If it could uh, take out this high, then it would have. Uh, broken this uh, lower high, lower low type of price action. And looking at the 10 year yield today, uh, it came back above this 1.2%. Uh, it's sitting at 1.28%. Remember uh, on uh, Tuesday, yesterday, it actually dipped down to this 1.12. Uh, Got a uh, nice reversal and came back up. So right now it appears that it might be uh, coming back up uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it work back up to this 1.4 level. And there should be any surprise as the yield uh, come up, then uh, we see the dollar uh, weakening a little bit. But it is still inside of this range here between the 92 and 94. So we'll continue to watch the dollar chop around inside of this zone and see would it uh, move up toward this uh, 93 and a half and the uh, 94 level. 
remember I said that once you get up to these level here, get above this level here, then we could start uh, hearing the Fed uh, talking the dollar down. And so as the dollar uh, retreated a little bit, we saw the uh, crude oil came back up. And here on the silver, see that it came down and uh, almost got down to this 2471 area and got a little bit of a bounce. Remember, we we're talking about this uh, uh, bear flag here and do a little bit of a projected move. Should take it down to uh, below this 2470. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it. You see, would it get a bounce and come back up? to this 2667 but uh if uh, if it break this uh 2471 then look for this 2272 and go is continue to try to hold on to this 1804 level um you know been uh, trying to move up to this uh, 1846 and i'm saying that it probably will come back down to this 1804 and i wouldn't be surprised it will break it and come back down and retest the uh, the level near the uh, seventeen hundred dollar level. Now let's take a look at the uh, profiles for the E Mini S and P five hundred ES. Here's the uh, market profile. Remember, I was talking about these uh, single prints, right? This is the uh, left from uh, last Friday and the poor low, and also this uh, point of control. So on the weekend video, on one of the videos, I was saying that, you know, although we're going to be uh, going down for a while, but uh, the S&P 500 uh, will likely come back up and take care of these business and also tag this point of control. So it might not make a new all-time high, but at least, well, you know, this uh, E-mini S&P 500 is telling us that the uh, cash index will likely come back up uh, as... Uh, the uh, futures is come up to, uh, you know, tag these levels and repair these poor structures. The thing is, I didn't expect it to come up this soon. Also, I tweeted in my uh, on my Twitter stream that a lot of people are getting bearish too soon, you know, too quickly. So that kind of alert me that you know this pullback, you know, might not uh, last that long because we got too many people anticipating this and looking for this pullback. Remember, the market, you know, have a tendency to punish most of the people most of the time. The market always will be acting in the opposite side of the majority. So when you have the majority of the market participant is anticipating a bearish move, the market will not accommodate, right? Although, yeah, we saw this pullback, but right now, as you can see, with this uh, short squeeze, or it could be just a you know a brief period of uh, you know bear trap, or it could set up to trap the dip buyers. Right now, we uh, still got a lot of these unfinished business here, down here that we need to uh, get repair. And also today, we have some single print uh, left here. And even though we still this right here, it one tick away from filling this single print, right? So, so we could still see it come up now would it come up and tag this before it start make its way back down don't know we'll see what happened tomorrow and we'll see what happened on friday you know on opex they might ramp it up and come up and tag this and then you know reset the game again right so right now we're essentially looking at this you know all these things down here in addition to a lot of the other stuff right because there are a lot of structure poor structure that we need to repair so there are a lot of these down here you know way down to you know down into March so that's why I am still looking for this market to turn if it is unable to put in a uh, higher high then I'm looking for the next move down to come down and dip below the uh, you know the 4000 level and into the 3900 level because we got a lot of these stuff that need to be uh, cleaned up here. See, these May is still down at the 4,100 level, and here, you know, getting down to the 4,000 level now, right? So there are a lot of stuff down here into April, okay, March. That's where we will need to go, right? Clean up all these things down in the March low. So those are the stuff that I'm looking at right now. 
uh, for the possibility of the uh, the S and P five hundred of coming back down if it failed to take out the all time high. Now let's go take a look at the volume profile and why I said that on Tuesday it is a uh, a uh, short squeeze because this right here the profile if you look at this profile this is essentially p-shaped profile so the p-shaped profile usually associate with you know short squeeze because you know you look at the uh, the volume here it's not too much volume in as it going up so most of the time you know you see these low volume zone because a lot of the uh, short seller when they want to when they run for cover, they basically put in market order to just go and cover, right? They're not going to put in limit order and then wait for it to get filled. So that's why you see these price just kind of run up, you know, and then you kind of stall here and then another push, right? You know, when these uh, guys come in and uh, just, uh, just, just cover at any cost, right? So that's why you get these uh, very low volume structure moving up. And then once uh, most of the uh, short covering is done, then you start to consolidate up here near the top of the uh, the profile, and that's where we get this uh, P-shaped profile, and that usually associated with a short squeeze. So today we got a little bit of a balance day skewing toward the upside, but uh, we got prices uh, ahead of the uh, point of control, the value area. You know, so we'll see will the price come back in, or will it? Uh, you know, start to establish new value up here tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on that. So let's go and take a look at the heat map. Okay, this is the heat map for the S&P 500. As you can see, not too many uh, uh, red other than Apple and Tesla. Uh, look at the semiconductor, it's all green. Okay? And the uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. Okay. And then uh, you also have these uh, consumer discretionary, Amazon a little bit neutral, okay. and uh, we have the financial participating today, right? Morgan Stanley, uh, nice gain over three and a half percent. J.P. Morgan, you know, two percent. Bank of America, two percent. So Apple is a little weak today, and so is uh, Tesla. And looking at the Nasdaq 100. Again, you can see the healthcare got a little weak today. Uh, consumer stable, a little weak. Uh, you know, again, the semiconductor is strong. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up to help me uh, promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.